Brofist to you all. Welcome to the workshop. It's Workshop Wednesday, baby. Workshop fucking Wednesday. Oh, yeah. What's the workshop? You're new to my channel. Hello. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> the workshop is where you send me some footage of you playing via the YouTube. And then we take a look at it and see if we can make you better players. Patch 5.2 is here. And everybody is gloriously running around like crazy doing dailies and whatnot and other kinds of crazy sausage and all that kind of stuff. And that's cool. That's cool. New content means exciting times. I had a great day today and a terrible day all mixed together. So I'm going to tell you about it. Why? Because I like to tell you things. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Before we jump into the workshop. We have a streamathon kind of thing tonight. Ghosty is streaming this evening. New transmog rules are here. Ghosty will be streaming from there. Yay! On the brand new monitor and all that stuff that you guys help provide for us. Ghosty is going to be streaming from there this evening. I'm expecting him promptly. Should be awesome. I had the opportunity today to film stuff for YouTube. Yeah. Doing the 5.2 video for you. Because some people are still confused on some of the class changes. Why does my pet freeze on my frost mage not work anymore? Why am I not getting figures of frost? Duh! What's going on, Breacher? What's happening? Jeez, you guys. What do you think of the Lumi mage level 90 changes? What do you think, Preacher? What do you think? Ugh! All these kind of things. Uh, and that's kind of cool. But in doing so, I was preparing for the Dis Priest Guide. Mmm, Dis Priest Guide. You guys have been waiting a long time for it. So I started doing my training for that, practicing to make sure I get everything right. I ran into every kind of... Sometimes I really regret not filming literally every single thing that I do in World of Warcraft. Because I would have endless hours of entertainment to show you guys. I ran into everything today. I will tell you about each of them. Because they're each equally more crazy than the last. Firstly, a warlock. A warlock who needed on the spirit trinket. And I thought nothing much of it. I didn't. It has intellect on it. It's a five man, right? Everything goes. Everything goes. Needs on the spirit trinket. But I couldn't help but inspect him. I couldn't help it. I was like, oh, you needed the spirit trinket? Really? Dude. So I kind of checked it out. I kind of checked him out. Has two epic trinkets and in fact a shitload of epic gear on him. I was like, you motherfucker. Motherfucker. What the hell is going on with that? He then whispers me <laughs> as the last boss dies and tells me, sorry, I couldn't miss an opportunity to ninja from preach. Thanks for doing all the great guides. It really helped my DPS. And left the pie. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be of service. Glad to be of service. <laughs> Absolutely glad to be of service. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. And if you're watching right now, you're a star. It's the most baffling reason of <laughs> things I've ever heard of. <laughs> it was... Pretty fucking crazy. I'm not naming and shaming, no, because I, I, I was so I was kind of laughing a lot. <laughs> when I read it, I was like, no fucking way. That's really weird. Great payback, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I had a tank. I had two tanks actually, two tanks. One tank was mighty and bold. And what he wanted us to just behold his power and his Scarlet Monastery. <laughs> Ran through every single mob up to Brother Koloff. Didn't tank a single one of them. Pulled the boss. And then attempted what he thought was line of sight. In order to drag everything to him. Now. Me. Was healing him. I had just dinged. I had literally no heroic gear whatsoever. <laughs> I was in greens. And I was kind of thinking to myself. The fuck is going to happen here? I mean literally every single mob was aggroed. Activated. And running up the stairs towards this wonderful tank. Who was tanking Brother Karloff. As he approached the wall where he attempted to line of sight. Because he's seen the pros do it, right? Pros just line of sight this shit. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he got them all gathered. And then Brother Karloff did his sprinting fire thing. And every single time he failed to actually aggro the mobs. There was a lot. About 13. 13 heroic mobs. Not being tanked. And a boss. And me and my greens. Ready to heal it. We survived. I tell you what, I do not regret ever that Fade was put into this game. And Void Tendrils is a wonderful, wonderful spell. 
being able to fear things down steps and void tendril them there and then come back up. That's what I was doing. I was like, I should be filming this, right? <laughs> I should be filming this. I was like, how can I deal with this situation? Fear them down the stairs. Void tendril them down there. Come all the way back up. Keep healing the tank and the group and so on and so forth. And repeat and rinse and repeat. It was pretty good. It actually worked out kind of well and was pretty stylish along the way. It was pretty goddamn stylish. My third, my third story of today is a tank. <laughs> Shadow Pan Monastery, who didn't pull the first pack for about 45 to a, to a minute, 45 seconds to a minute. Then the next pack, he waited a good 10 15 seconds, and I was Shadow in this run. And the healer started to complain, You're going too slow. His response, I'm going slow because there's too much trash and this dungeon takes too long. This baffled me. This baffled me. Okay, this dungeon takes too long, so I'm going to go extra slow to counter that. Then, he goes AFK after the first boss because he needs coke. He needs a can of coke. I'll be right back. I need a can of coke. So we waited patiently. He then returns, slowly working our way through Shadowpan Monastery. Then, just before the big Shah boss, I don't know his name, he says, I need to go AFK again because I need a shit. And then he comes back about 10 minutes later after we tried to kick him, but it wouldn't let us. We tried to kick him, it wouldn't let us. <laughs> he said, I can't believe we're still in this dungeon. <laughs> I can't believe this dungeon is still going on, right? How could this dungeon still be going on? And like, I, we have no idea. And then the healer and the other DPS has turned into a kind of a rage fest. And he did actually just leave the group, the up and left. It was a pretty bizarre day, a pretty bizarre day, but it was still... Pretty good. It was pretty damn funny. Anyway, onwards with today. Today's workshops I have three times. I want to pre-warn you of something. Those of you who watch my workshop and feel that you can send me a video of you being super awesome and promote your channel, that's not going to happen. Six of the last ten workshops that I watched last night were of people asking me to promote their channel. And therefore kept having things like their YouTube channel appear in the video. <laughs> YouTube slash I win. Okay? We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I have for us today a Marksman's Hunter. Kind of going to be popular. Kind of going to be popular in a new patch, hopefully. A Combat Rogue and a Prot Warrior. And a Prot Warrior. Okay. Now, one of these needs a serious amount of work and is, in fact, the most baffling workshop I have ever seen. Some workshops, it takes me a while to work out what the problem is. Okay. Everything looks to be there, but I can't work out the problem. Eventually, I usually do. Eventually, I kind of figure it out and I tell you guys. I just, oh, your eyesight is looking at the wrong part of the screen. That makes sense. Now I can see what you're doing. Oh, you were trying to counteract this, but kind of got it wrong. That makes sense to me. I can work that out. In this particular workshop, I have no fucking idea why you are doing what you're doing. And it's annoying me. Maybe the audience can help us out on that one. The first one we're actually going to look at is going to be the Combat Rogue. It's kind of a quickie. Uh, there wasn't much wrong here. Another note about workshops. People always ask me, do you want to see a raid? Do you want to see LFR? Do you want to see a dungeon? What's best to show me? I like a combination of both. I like a bit of a dungeon and a bit of a raid. What I don't want to see is a boss that is trivially easy for your class. Trivially easy easier to the point where you dominate because of the way your class works things like that that kind of sucks okay and that's what happened here so trying to help you on this video is not particularly easy um what we are going to look at is a combat rogue on the stone guards normal yeah it's that fight where combat rogues just blade flurry for the entire fight kind of hard <laughs> kind of hard to find really solid tips of a combat rogue just blade flurrying everything down uh <laughs> so Let's go and go and go. Oh, I want to change that, don't I? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's better. Are we ready? We're ready. We're ready. So we're going to do the usual thing. Checking you eyes. All that kind of lovely goodness. I'm going to play this for a few seconds. Yeah. And here we go. We're looking at you eyes straight away. Mm -mm. Ah. Looking at you eye. I saw a back pedal. Saw a back pedal. Oh my god. I saw that back pedal, baby. Yeah, blade flurrying like a king. <laughs> the map. It's awesome. <laughs> 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 
Bats. <laughs> is it too damn big? Too damn big. No omen. Shockingly. And yes, as pointed out in the chat, this is of course you, Mr. Harry Hovno. Yeah. This is not the greatest thing to show me for a workshop. Let's talk about UIs. UIs is actually fine. No big deal at all. Uh, the health bars are a little bit big, but whatever. It's not really impeding anything. To be honest, we've got all our cooldowns nice and safe. Um, the only thing I really want to pick up on here is that this fight isn't great for me to do a workshop on because your job here isn't that immense. You do some cool things. You do a lot of fainting and a lot of cloaking of removing the frost traps and stuff. Very nice to see. Like that. Responded well to some environment. This pull is dog shit though. I just want to talk about this pull straight away. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It starts there, I believe. Because uh, you go for the pre-pot. And you still have the ability, okay, as a rogue, you still get your your first tier talents to do something awesome from stealth that doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost us anything. It is kind of awkward to pre-pot stealth and then shadow step in. But you should get in the habit of doing that. Uh, what we do is we pre-pot shadow step and we just we, we kind of walk in, we lose that ability to do something awesome from stealth. Uh, we pre-start with Blade Flurry. I personally, now, this is just me being a nitpicking asshole. Really, a nitpicking asshole. I really don't like starting with Blade Flurry until the, the tank gathers the mobs. Uh, I really just don't like that. It's a simple thing, I know. Uh, but there's a moment when you go in. Every bit of energy counts when you're a rogue. Every little last little piece of energy counts. And when we go in, we're not actually Blade Flurrying from the very start. The mobs are actually separated a little bit. Uh, and our Blade Flurry just... It's a little, a little couple of seconds, maybe not starting with Blade Flurry. You did point out he doesn't get slice and dice, slice and dice on. Um, slice and dice. He did know about this, okay? He doesn't put slice and dice on until he goes into like the adrenaline rush, rock and roll express. See, slice and dice still isn't there. Ooh, goof up, <laughs> goof up. There we go. There's slice and dice on. So it's the little things like that, but it's not much gameplay I can get from this. So you're asking me. I know what you're saying to yourself. It's preacher. Why are we watching this video if there's not much else to say to show you? I'm gonna test how awesome you guys are. Because I spotted something and it started to really fuck me off. To the point that I had to use an outside resource to check. To check. What if, if what I thought was happening was happening. There's something missing. And it's something that costs him DPS. Now maybe Mr. Vanish is here. Maybe Mr. Vanish can see it. Do you want to be tested? I'll give you a few seconds with this. Um, I'll give you a few seconds. There's something missing. <laughs> and it really annoys me. It really... No, it's not rupture because we're blade flurrying. So we want that eviscerate to be spreading. <laughs> Come on, baby. It, I don't think anybody's going to get this. I don't think anybody is going to get this. No, buffs are on. Okay, I'll let me make it easier. Debuffs. 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 Oh, there's Pilkey. There he is. Pilkey's got it. Pilkey grabbed it. I had to point out his debuffs. There's no fucking armor debuff on this fucking boss. You asshole. You should be doing it. You should be doing it. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Grr! Armor debuff, baby. Armor debuff. You, and you annoyed me because you had a fucking prot warrior as well. You had a fucking prot warrior and he stood forever alone over in this fucking corner debuffing the mobs. And by the time they get back, they just lose it. And that's really annoying because you have hunters who can also do this debuff. You've got a prop pally. I don't. I think your shaman is elemental. I think he's Ali. Uh, and you, especially, okay. You especially. You want your armor debuff on. It's a big source of damage. It's a huge source of damage. Really good source of damage. You want that. You want it on. Now, normally this isn't actually a big deal. This is like 10-man problems, 10-man world problems, right? First world problems, this is a 10-man problem. You have a prop warrior. I don't know if he's off-spec. I don't know if he's a usual tank and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you were, if he's a usual tank, normally you're not going to have this problem. He's going to have it on. But you need to be aware. When you raid 10-man, I want to give you a link to this resource, and you should do it. And if you're in a 10-man right now, you need to do this. You need to use this resource because it's awesome. It's called... MMO Champions Raid Comp. Okay? MMO Champions Raid Comp. And all you do is you drag your fucking setup into... I have a Balanced Druid. We have a Survival Hunter. We have a Fire Mage. 
We have a fucking holy paladin. Whatever it is, you drag it in and it tells you what the hell you're missing. What the hell you're missing and where you can get it from. If we take out a hunter, uh, we lose loads of things. So you need to be aware that hunters can have different pets that bring all sorts of stuff. Please, for the love of God, use this resource if you're 10-man. Because missing certain debuffs really sucks. Because your damage is going to suck and your raid is going to suck as a result. Read it. If you're in a 10-man right now, you're like, oh, I've never heard of that. Do it. Drag these classes in. Be aware hunter pets can screw it up. Always put your hunters in last. Hunter pets can really screw it up because they can bring a number of buffs. Drag your usual setup in. See what buffs you're missing. And debuffs especially because your damage is going to suck. Okay? Your damage is going to suck. You really need to be aware of that. But I do want you to send me another resource because you said overall. Uh, the notes that I got with this is that overall the raid leader's like, ah, oh, your damage has kind of suffered a little bit. One other thing I want you to start doing, and combat rogues need to be aware of this. Combat rogues not an amazing source of uh, skill, but the higher top end is, is this buff here, Deep Insight. Insight is a realistically powerful, powerful buff that combat rogues get, okay? It's really, really important. You need to start tracking this. If you want to be a pro raiding combat rogue, start trapping your ins tracking your Insight buff. Doing things like trying to... Um, Slice and dice while you're inside there. You should be preparing for slice and dice to be on before you go into deep insight because all your finishers during deep insight are really a little bit more powerful. Uh, also, clipping things like rupture outside of deep insight. Let's give an example. If you rupture a mob while deep insight is up, that rupture is going to be a lot more powerful. And you might be of the opinion, oh, I just need to keep rupture on. I should clip it just before it wears off. But you only have like medium insight when you try and do that. That can be a DPS loss. Especially if you've got low insight and you're trying to keep it up and it all gets a little bit fucked up. You want to be aware of your deep insight. Start tracking that. Start getting used to slice and dicing without being inside deep insight. Because those finishes are really important. Okay. So I want you to send me another video. Because I want to help you. For the love of God, you 10 man guilds. The whole point of that video is you 10 man guilds. You really, really need to check what buffs you're bringing, what debuffs you're missing. And if you are able to do things like expose armor, and it doesn't cost you anything, because it doesn't, okay, you need to do that, Mr. Hovno. You're the, you're the Sunder guy. That's you. You're the Sunder guy. Do it, motherfucker. Get it done. Okay, we're going to take another quick look at a prop warrior during Shara Fear. I like the way this, this character actually included a wipe. <laughs> I'm not sure why, <laughs> but he did. Uh, includes a wipe, which is cool. <laughs> I like it if people send me wipes. <laughs> and then show me the actual video. So we're going to look at the UI briefly. Okay. Tell me what you think of this UI. Do, 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 do. Mmm. Coke Zero. All right. Ah. <laughs> Omen, yes. <laughs> Omen. <laughs> Omen, once again, proving why you don't need Omen. <laughs> oh, it's a troll warrior. Never mind. Let's skip that one. I don't do troll warriors. Next workshop is... I'm only joking. Seriously, don't send me troll warriors. For real. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Omen, once again, proving why we don't need Omen. <laughs> So go you redheaded punk troll. Alright, what do we think of the UI? What do we think? He doesn't track Sunder as a debuff. Um I'm not particularly asked about that, really. Uh he can see it there that it's on. It's kinda of, as silly as it sounds, as silly as it sounds, because as you guys know, I was a prop warrior for like a long time, like six years or something stupid. Uh multi sundering and caring about Sunder armor. Is kind of something that only really good warriors do. Caring about people who appreciate the value of Sunder Armor. Uh, it kind of comes with a bit of experience as to how important Sunder Armor is. You can kind of tell who's a good tank. Who's making sure that Sunder is on a lot of mobs as it increases DPS dramatically. Um, it doesn't matter too much these days in Mr. Pandaria. Considering you're either tanking a boss. And generally tank DPS is so high it's not really a big deal in five mans. 
Uh, and if it's just going to be alive long, if you're going to do it anyway, do you know what I mean? Um, it's previously something that's important. For watch out for your challenge modes for doing stuff like that, where you can keep your DPS really high and spreading Sunder and therefore tracking it. It's not something I'm big on for the workshops so what we're trying to do here today. Um, what do we think about this then? Uh, Clusterfuck could be way more spread out through the screen. He's top of the damage. Kicking ass and taking names. Hair is distracting. Lack of shoes is disturbing me. I actually think it's a wonderful UI. Uh, I have no issues with this UI whatsoever. I think it's really nice. Uh, it'd be nitpicking again. Just being a general dickhead is the swing timer from Quartz. We just don't need. Uh, and locking grid in place. If we always have grid there, we don't need to have this grid tab. We can hide it. Other than that, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I thought there was nothing wrong with the UI whatsoever. Now, the main issue our chappy chap had here, it does have thrash cooldown. We have spoke about this before. Encounter specific problems. Like this, the only real problem in this fight as a tank is thrash. Uh, thrash is the thing that can kill you really quickly. But he does quite well with it, actually. He copes re reasonably well with shield block and shield barrier up every single time. Uh, no big deal with that at all. So there's his thrash. Copes with it pretty well. And it's, everything's pretty cool. So UI-wise, it's pretty fine. Now, his problem wasn't really tanking the boss. Uh, it wasn't really tanking the boss whatsoever. His problem came on the platforms. He said he felt like he was swimming in rage and not using his rage effectively. Um, I, when I did this boss on beta, I was I was tanking it. And I noticed that uh, warriors seemed to me to be extremely overpowered on the platform specifically. I actually felt very, very overpowered. Uh, I know the lack of use of Skull Banner, but each to their own. Skull Banner hasn't been used, uh, which is fine. And I think they call for a wipe. I'm just going to show you dying because you're a fucking troll. Um, if you're going to send me a troll warrior video, <laughs> big mistake. Oh, come on. Bye. Oh, that's glorious. Oh, can I put it in slow-mo? I want to put it in slow-mo. Uh, I'm a troll mon and I'm dead. Dead troll. Come on, one more time for daddy. Ah, yeah. So good. Um, so we're going to skip on to the platform. So I want to get to this other video. Uh, I really want to get to there pretty quickly. So we're going to skip on. Here we go. Okay, so we're on these platforms. Now, the amazing thing about these platforms is that you just get so much rage constantly, which is great because barrier and block block has a kind of cooldown barrier doesn't uh and it does feel like he's swimming in rage a couple of times but as you can see he monitors his barrier when he puts it back up in a moment by moving around i did what do a note you should be trying to solo this if you can't uh warriors have very got that high mobility abusing your mobility to the max is always nice uh but you can see here we're at full we don't want to do this this is bad our main goal as a prop warrior is to never cap rage unless we're saving for something particular so when thrash is coming as a prop warrior we want full rage because then we can go barrier block boom and we're safe we're safe as houses right uh when it's situations like this we don't want to cap our rage what we want to be doing is spamming fucking barrier like a badass because our rage is going to fill up so much quicker we're losing lots of unnecessary health this is all unnecessary damage there goes the barrier and you can see we just start absorbing everything and our rage just fills right back up baby all the time barrier 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 and spam that bastard to death it was the only thing he was particularly concerned about was is he doing this kind of correctly no no worries throwing a little bit of block in there for the physical damage uh, i love this it's just barrier blocking running around during death blossom like it's no big deal even though he's a troll that's fine but we have all this rage don't sit at 100 rage never do that unless you're waiting for something in particular if you're waiting for something really special then we sit at 100 rage because we need both of these things. Every other time we reach 100 rage, we have failed. We have failed in our task as a warrior, as a prop warrior. We have actually failed. You should count every time you hit 100 rage accidentally as a failure because we, we could have used something there. That's just damage we should not have taken in some form. Let's not do that. We don't want to. We want to sit nice and high and it's all pretty cool. It's all pretty awesome. Everything else was pretty good. Uh, the pinwheel add-on is just the positioning around the platform, which is fine. I, I want to get really quickly to this Hunter video. <sighs> right, we're going to look at the UI first of all. Now, this is the video that absolutely baffled my brain. Like, actually baffled me beyond all recognition. I don't know why you have the problem you have. I don't know. There is nothing in your notes to suggest why this problem should exist. All your notes suggested was that I should be doing a lot more DPS. 
Yes, you should. And we're going to see why your DPS is low. That bit is obvious. What I can't find is why... <laughs> How to say this? It's like the why of the why. I could see why your DPS is low. I do not know why that has occurred. I can't see the precursor, which is what I'm looking for. I can't see what has led you to this situation. Uh, so we're going to look at initially at the UI before we jump into this. I have so many notes on this. We're going to be looking at two fights. We're going to look at the Spirit Kings and Elagon. The Spirit Kings and Elagon. Night Elf Hunter. Nice. Here comes the ball. Bum, 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 bum. Mmm, baby. Go to it. So what do we think of this UI? Da ass. <laughs> His pit bull isn't centered. It's driving you crazy. Got a hit cap. I'm not bothered about the hit cap. It looks like a clusterfuck now. It does appear that way. It does appear that way. Because um, it's... Yeah, why use barrage? There's, there's a lot going on here. Okay, we're going to get started on this. There's a lot going on. The UI is actually fine if it was serving its purpose. Okay? This strikes me as a player, and I don't know if you're in the chat or not, who has followed my guides almost to the letter, but hasn't actually enacted anything. So I do a guide suggesting something like... Get a tell me when to make sure you're easily tracking your cooldowns. So he's done that, but not done not done what they're supposed to do. Uh, and there's a reason that his UI looks like a clusterfuck of cooldowns. If I take us back to the pull, if I take us back to the pull, uh, which is at 251, bum, 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 it's actually a quite a decent idea for a UI. And here it comes. I want it right. Come on, baby. Activate and there. Everything here makes sense. This is telling us that Serpent Stink is not on the boss. This is telling us that Chimera Shot is ready, Dire Beast, a Murder of Crows, and for some reason you have Barrage. Be aware it costs you nothing to swap your level 90 talent. Please do so. For the sake of raiding for 30 minutes, you might as well give yourself an extra useful spell. Everything here does make sense. It makes absolute sense. What we're not doing, for some reason, is doing what this whole UI is designed to let us do. Okay? It's designed to let us do. This information is all useful. What I cannot, for the life of me, work out when I watch this video is, where the fuck are you looking? What are you looking at? I do not know. I do not know. What are you looking at? I, I just can't work it out. For the life of me, I don't know what you're, you're, what you're looking at. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, I'm going to see a few examples of why that is. It's not the TV. <laughs> as much as it could have been the TV, it's not. There are blatant errors here that do not make sense because he's not watching the boss. Okay, let's look at the pull. It's interesting. We Serpent Sting. See, the Serpent Sting has disappeared from up here. We then use the Chimera Shot. You can see the Chimera Shot's there. And then for some reason, we go instantly into Steady Shot. We ignore both Dire Beast and we ignore a Murder of Crows. We, of course, ignore Rapid Fire for the sake of it. We ignore our Barrage, which we have. We might as well use it. Um, and you just we go straight into Steady Shots for quite some time. We're just rebuilding our focus up here. We even get the Aim Shot proc. There it is, which is, again, part of the UI. And now we've used the Murder of Crows, and now we sit on our Chimera shot. We sit on it. And go back into Steady Shots. Okay. And then we're still sitting on Dire Beast, and now we're Steady Shotting away. And another Steady Shot. Now we've used Dire Beast. And now our Chimera shot is back. We use it, which is cool. Steady Shotting, Steady Shotting. Capped our focus. We actually cap our focus while we've got the aim shot proc. And then use aim shot. Sit at 100 focus and kind of run in a circle. Chimera shot. I know I'm pointing out, but it's interesting to me. Steady shot. Steady shot. Steady shot again. Cap our focus. Another steady shot. <laughs> it's... And then this happens. 
we get annihilated on top of it. Yeah. This is one of the most bizarre workshops I've ever been sent. And the reason is this. Every single piece of information you need to be pretty much 90% of your potential DPS is literally right in front of you. And you don't use it in any way. And I find that really, really crazy. Even if we were brand new to the spec. I'm looking, looking, for, looking at his bars for sure. I thought about that. I thought about that. But then I thought, but why? But why? Why would we do that if everything we needed... He's not clicking. Everything's key-binded. Everything's key-binded. We're not clicking in any way. And we suggest, let's pretend we're looking at our bars. Are we looking at our bars? I don't think so. Because we would notice things much earlier. If we were looking at our bars, as you can see, we we're essentially at 100 focus all the time. Um, it's. I don't think it is that. I don't think it is. I considered that we were looking at the bars. I did consider it. But I just do not believe that. From the style of play we have, as looking around, we see the flanking guard as we move around. I find it almost impossible to believe that we're looking at our bars with a giant fucking button <laughs> telling us to Chimera shot directly in the middle of the screen and then we're not doing it. I f it's so... Ob Even if I pretend right now to stare at these bars... Uh, I want to take us to 329. If I take us here, if I was looking at those bars and I'm just staring at them, I find it hard not to notice that I'm focus capped. I find it hard not to realize I have these other buffs up and I'm sitting on 100 focus and avoid flanking orders at the same time. If I'm staring at the bars, I'm not going to avoid flanking orders. I'm not going to do it. It's not in my peripheral vision. You see the flanking orders cooldown is there. So he can, that's the only place you can see it. There's the flanking orders, which then shows him he's got Chimera. And he's he moves, effectively, from flanking orders. There it is, he sees it. So he's definitely looking around the screen. And it's really confusing to me. And it doesn't look, again, some suggestions like it's panic nervous. I don't get that impression either. This is not the play of a panic person. I can see a panic person a mile away. I, I, I'm used to seeing that. It's kind of an interesting interesting workshop for me to try and work it out. Because it's not a bot. We can prove that. All the information you need to be a good player is right in front of you. Uh, so I'm going to kind of take it from the start. I'm going to try and take it from the start and point things out. Okay. Which is going to seem pretty obvious for the start. And then we're going to look at Elegon. Uh, I don't even think it's practice. In fact, the whole idea of add-ons like what I suggested you use is indeed to remove the idea... Of needing practice nobody needs practice with if you look at this UI if you look at this UI nobody here needs practice to know that you should cast dire beast the murder of crows or barrage not a single one of you right here who set up this add-on in nice equal spacing as he has done would ever tell me I need practice to know that this means I need to press them and it's not a case of just dumping focus that's not the primary issue that is one issue is that we're focus capping we're not pressing the buttons that are pretty fucking obvious that we should be doing, right? We're just not doing it. We're not doing it. We go for a very, very long time without using any of these. Boss is now at 95%. We've still not used any of these cooldowns. We're now doing the Annihilate. We've got all these things in front of us. And we've still not done a Diabetes. We haven't done a single one. We're not even trying to press it. I monitored the buttons. We're not even trying to press it. So I'm going to assume... <sighs> I have no fucking idea why you're doing this. I, it kind of felt like a troll at first, but I don't think it is. Because you actually... Uh, uh, this person in particular has a channel. YouTube channel. And at first I thought it was kind of a joke on me. But the other videos are actually very similar. Um, so... Whoa. 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 <laughs> that focus. <laughs> that focus. Uh, okay, so let's take it as if I was doing this without the, the add-on existing. Is your pull... You get your Serpent Sting on, blow your fucking life up. Get your Chimera shot on cooldown. Dire Beast is such a short cooldown. God, you need to do it. You need to do it. You really need to do it. You got your aim shot on. You can see these things are occurring. Uh, this is just crazy, crazy bad. 
crazy, crazy bad. Uh, in terms of DPS numbers, Marx was quite a way behind the others, so don't worry too much uh, about the lack of DPS. But it, your big problem right now is you are not using your spells at all. I don't think I ever see you really cast an arcane shot. Ever. Ever, ever. We sit at 100 focus. A lot. We're steady shotting now with 100 focus, and then we're chimera shotting. Obviously, you want to be more aware of your focus. If this is too thin for you or not noticeable enough, could it be more noticeable than these? Maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. But we need to definitely do that. And obviously, things like this, crackers. This is that is crazy. Let's not do that, okay? We need to be aware. If you can see the whole area is about to uh, blow the fuck up, then you need to get out of there. Then we spot this at 425. 425, which kind of again backs up the idea of it not being a troll video. Uh, of not being a troll video. Is we get to here. Now, this guy is about to die. If this was me, I'd be DPSing him down. I would have my misdirect ready for the next boss. What actually happens is we go full disco. And it's not very often that people go full disco, but when they do go full disco, I'm always kind of impressed that people go full disco. And you're about to see what uh, full disco is all about. Boss dies. And LUA. <laughs> uh, close that. And then we go full disco spin. Spin, baby, burn, baby, burn. Just to reiterate, full disco. You know, these are your tanks that go full disco in your five mans. You've seen them before. They kill a mob and then they go full disco. Here it is. Mob dies. LUA error. On the spot, full disco. Full disco. Full disco. And back in the game. <laughs> and we're back in the game and of course we're charging into volley like a champ run through it like it's the wheel of death I quite enjoy that idea uh, running into it <laughs> celebrating the kill switching targets and th this goes on for a while okay it goes on for a while like this helping you is really hard really hard at some points I did figure that you might be a bot I did. I did. Some things make me suggest this might be a boss, uh, a bot, which is still kind of cool. Um, I don't think it is. In fact, I hope it's not. <laughs> I hope it's not. Um, yeah, six steady shots in a row. Even, uh, do you know why? Do you know why I don't think it's a bot? And this is going to sound really horrible. And it is. A bot would play better. It would. Wouldn't it? Even the worst hunter bots for marksmen would be better than this. And I'm not trying to be horrible. And that's one of my reasons for suggesting this isn't a bot. A bot marksman hunter bot that has been designed to let you be a marksman hunter bot wouldn't cast six steady shots in a row. It just wouldn't do it. It wouldn't do it. It would use all the buttons. It would spam everything. That's what it would do. Your bots just spam everything. That's what they do. They press everything they fucking have. They'll just go and do it. It wasn't a kick in the nuts. So I'm trying to dissuade you from being a bot. Because I don't know what your problem is. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying. But I don't know. It's not the case if he's not a good player. No, 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 no. It's okay to say we're not a good player. We don't need to be a good player to see that we're sitting on cooldowns. We don't need to do that. Okay? A good player... And, oh, the worst player in the universe who has managed to sell Tell Me When for a Chimera shot. You've gone into Tell Me When. You know you need to press Chimera shot. You've, dis you've got an add-on. You've made it. You've put on Chimera shot. You've put on the spell cooldown. You've positioned it nicely on your screen. You are good enough at that stage to know that when that thing pops up, you need to press it. It's not a case of being a bad player. It's not a case of being a bad player. Uh, I have a note at 1314 where it's called hashtag not giving a shit. I will not lie. My note says... Hashtag not giving a shit. See it there? Hashtag not giving a shit. I kind of feel... Okay, I'm going to show you why. This is hashtag not giving a shit. Because, as you'll see... Go, go, go. Come on, I put it at 13, 14. Must be it's maybe 14, 14. Uh, yeah, it's here. We <laughs> we just uh, yeah <laughs> ignore these things. 
Ignore everything. <laughs> Ignore everything. We'll just we'll just we'll just DPS Elegon. <laughs> this is why things don't die at Elegon. <laughs> we just we just don't bother. <laughs> we just don't bother. Uh, <laughs> if you can see what we were looking at there, uh, draw power is about to happen in a moment. <laughs> so many steady shots. Get steady shotted on, sir. Another steady shot for your face. Another keep going. Total annihilation. Blah, blah, blah. Let's play it through. Why not? Here come the ads. Hashtag not giving a shit. 2013. Yeah, exactly. As Urge 2 points out, there is a guy here. Look, he's, you can see the mouse moving around. Just not giving a shit. Most baffling workshop I've ever had. It really is. Um, I kind of put in the idea. My first notes were is that you really didn't give a shit about LFR at all. And you were just kind of like uh, watching the TV. I mean, literally watching the TV is potentially viable. But then you did start doing things like clicking LUA errors, avoiding flanking orders, and so on and so forth. I don't know what the issue is. And it's... It's baffling to me. It's really crazy. It's really crazy, and I want to help you. If I was to say anything, assuming everything is correct, assuming everything is correct, and I want it to be correct, start using this more. Just that is your first step. Your first step is literally to start pressing these buttons that pop up on your damn screen, man. They pop up right in front of you. Use these quickly and just work on your focus. You don't want to cap that out. And that is all I want to leave you with. That's it. I don't want to tell you any more. Nothing more than that. Those buttons are there for a reason. You've made them. Use them and just don't cap your focus. Use Arcane Shot, okay? That's all I want to say to you to now. And I would love you to send me another video because it's really confusing me. Or maybe send me another video with some notes. That's all I want. It really is all I want. That's it. I want to help you. Because your DPS should be better. And I kind of want to know what the fuck is going on. Because it, I don't like being confused. <laughs> I don't like it. 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 I want to work it out for you. I want to work it out for you. Alright, that is the workshop for today. That's all I wanted to do. Because that thing is going to be driving me mad. Forever and ever and ever and ever. It's going to be absolutely driving me crazy. It's going to be driving me crazy for tonight. But Ghosty is on his way. And I want to get that sorted. Because we've got some Transmog and some Legal Legends and some PvP later. And all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm flabbergasted. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what it is. I really don't know. A uh, video coming up tonight on YouTube as well about all your 5.2 changes. And tomorrow we might have a drama day. We might have a drama day. I kind of want to talk about a little bit about the 5.2 raiding. I watched a lot of raiding today while I was working. Uh, a lot of Russian raiding, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the American guys and the Australians and stuff like that. And I'm looking forward to seeing some EU stuff. I think it's going to be pretty cool. And basically, that's it for today. If you do want to submit to the workshop, rules are I will not use videos of you just being super fucking awesome. Super fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> I won't do that. But please, send me something if you need help, especially with the 5.2 stuff. Of your new raids, anything you're stuck with on the new raids or new bosses, uh, then please send it to me. A preach game at gmail.com. Just upload it to YouTube and send it to me. Stark is streaming tonight, as Vanish has said, and Ghosty will be streaming with you in about an hour. Mr. Ghosty will be taking on transmog runs if you're not raiding somewhere in the EU. And it should be a lot of fun. Alright, guys, so be good. Take it easy and have fun. I enjoyed that workshop, although it's the craziest one I've seen. Craziest one I've seen. Yes, the daily will be up on YouTube shortly. Alright guys, have a good evening. Enjoy your rating if you're doing a new rating. I wanted to send out a message yesterday, but um, I forgot. It's plain and simple. But if you are new to rating, um, uh, a couple of things I want to say before I finish. If you are, is this, if this is your first time rating something cutting edge, which a lot of you are, because you progress quite well through 5.1. Most of you got into some sort of rating situation for the first time. Then good luck. Stay calm. Remember, everybody else in your raid team is learning as well. So don't panic. And all you're looking for tonight is not just to get as many kills as possible. Don't worry about that. You're looking at how your class can best cope with these bosses. That's it. How does your class best cope with these bosses? Just take it easy. Be relaxed and panic. And <laughs> panic. And don't panic. All right? And just find out how can your class best suit this boss. That's all you need to do for your first night's rating. And also a big thank you to all the emails I got today. So many of you got your first ever achievements for Cutting Edge. I think it was. 
Uh, you had never had anything like that before, but you have it now. It's the first time you'd ever received achievement like that, and you'd, some of you had never raided before, and now you have cutting edge, killing certain bosses, and you're really pleased with that. And I'm, thank you, thank you for thanking me. I guess thank you for thanking me, um, and I'm glad that you got those things. All right, guys, so be good. Have a great evening, and I'll see you tomorrow, 5 p.m. Bye.